In this lesson, we will examine some strategies to consider when writing algebraic equations. Now, in the previous lesson, we examined this question here regarding the ages of Larry Moe and Curly. In that lesson, we assigned our variables, and now we want to write an equation. So how do we do this? Well, one technique is to begin with a word equation. The question tells us that the sum of their ages is 95, so we can write the word equation Moe's age plus Larry's age plus Curly's age equals 95. Now let's take the variable expressions we assigned to the ages in the last lesson and write an equation. We can write m, Moe's age, plus m plus 5, Larry's age, plus 2 times m plus 5, Curly's age, equals 95. We can now solve this equation by first expanding 2 times m plus 5 in the brackets, then simplifying the left-hand side, then subtracting 15 from both sides, and then dividing both sides by 4 to get m equals 20. Since m represents Moe's age, we know that Moe is 20 years old. Now Larry's age is equal to m plus 5, so if m equals 20, then Larry must be 25 years old. And finally, Curly's age is equal to 2 times m plus 5. So if m equals 20, then Curly must be 50 years old. Now the question asks us to find Larry's age, and we can see here that Larry is 25 years old. Okay, now let's revisit another question from the previous lesson. Here we are asked to find the cost of the gift. And in the previous lesson, we assigned variable expressions in terms of g, the cost of the gift. Since the contributions of all three students are combined to pay the cost of the gift, we can write an equation. If we take Maya's contribution, and add Clara's contribution, and add Tom's contribution, which we can simplify as follows, the combined sum of their contributions must equal the cost of the gift, g. At this point, we have an equation we can solve for g. First, to eliminate the denominators here, we can multiply both sides by 30 to get the following. Then we will simplify the left-hand side, then subtract 31g from both sides, and then divide both sides by negative 1 to get g equals 90. Now the question asks us to find the cost of the gift. So since g is equal to the cost of the gift, the gift must cost $90. Alright, here's a new question to tackle. Here we are given information about the ages of three people. Notice that Liam's age is given in relationship to Gita's age, and Zoe's age is also given in relationship to Gita's age. Since Gita's age is central to the given information, let's let G equal Gita's age. Now the question tells us that Liam's age is five years more than twice Gita's age. So 2 times g represents twice Gita's age, and if we add 5 to this, we have an expression that represents Liam's age. Next, we are told that Zoe's age is 13 years less than 10 times Gita's age. Now 10 times g represents 10 times Gita's age, and if we subtract 13 from this, we have an expression that represents Zoe's age. Now that we have assigned variable expressions to the three ages, we want to write an equation. How do we do this? Well, our last piece of information tells us that Zoe is three times as old as Liam. So here is Liam's age, and here is Zoe's age. Now these two ages are not equal, since Zoe's age is three times Liam's age. Our goal is to make these two values equal so that we can create an equation. At the moment, Zoe's age is 3 times Liam's age. So if we take Liam's age here and multiply it by 3, then these two values will now be equal, which means we now have an equation that we can solve for g. First, we can expand the left-hand side, then subtract 6g from both sides, then add 13 to both sides, and then divide both sides by 4 to get g equals 7. Now g represents Gita's age, so Gita must be 7 years old. 2g plus 5 represents Liam's age, so if g is equal to 7, then Liam must be 19 years old. And finally, 10g minus 13 represents Zoe's age, so Zoe must be 57 years old. 
At this point, we can also confirm that Zoe's age of 57 is indeed three times Liam's age of 19. Now the question asks us to find Liam's age, so the answer here is 19. Notice that the crucial step of this question was taking the information about Zoe being three times as old as Liam and then writing the following equation. Given the importance of this step, let's look at another example where we can create an appropriate equation. Here we are told that the cost of a SureShot camera is $20 more than the cost of a Photo Pro camera. Given this information, what sort of word equation can we write using the cost of the SureShot and the cost of the Photo Pro? Can we say that these two values are equal? No, our goal is to create some sort of equality. Well, the cost of the SureShot is $20 more than the cost of the Photo Pro. So if we add $20 to the cost of the Photo Pro, then we can now say that the left-hand side here is equal to the right-hand side, which means we have our desired equation. Now what's another way to write an equation using the cost of both cameras? Well, since the cost of the SureShot is $20 more than the cost of the Photo Pro, we can take the cost of the SureShot and reduce it by $20 in order to make the two sides equal. All right, what's another equation we can write? Well, since the sure shot costs $20 more than the Photo Pro, we can write the cost of the sure shot minus the cost of the Photo Pro equals $20. So as you can see, there are several ways to write equations based on the same information. Now, when it comes to writing equations, the GRE assumes that you are already familiar with certain relationships. For example, you must know that profit is calculated by subtracting the cost from the revenue. So for example, if you bought a car for $10,000 and later sold it for $12,000, the profit is equal to 12,000 minus 10,000, which equals a $2,000 profit. You must also know that the total cost of multiple items is equal to the price per item times the number of items purchased. So if baseballs cost $3 each and you purchase 7 of them, the total cost will equal 3 times 7, which equals a total cost of $21. On a similar note, we can calculate one's earnings by taking the rate of pay and multiplying it by the time worked. So if someone is paid $30 per hour and he or she works 40 hours, then the total earnings will equal 30 times 40 for a total of $1,200. All right, let's summarize. In this lesson, we learned some tips to consider when writing and solving equations. They are, write a word equation, and then replace the pieces with algebraic expressions. Solve for the variable, and be sure to reread the question and confirm that you have found the required value. Finally, we learned some important relationships to be familiar with on the test.